this is Duncan from Rock and Roll Reviews. I'm joined by Kavos from Great Pleasure. How are you doing, sir? I'm very good. Thanks. Yeah, How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Um, not that long since we last chatted. That's right. Yeah. Um, but everything's changed. Yep. But in a really good way. Yeah. 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 Um, so you were in Beast Milk. What? Uh, we're in Beast Milk and um, the band kind of disbanded but then kind of reformed with, with some of the members carried over, uh, formed Grave Pleasures and you guys have just put out your debut album. Right. Um, excited? Yeah, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's been quite a crazy year so I, I don't know if excited is the right word but it's been intense. <laughs> I feel like it's, it's still like an intense sort of... Uh, it's like an out of control train that we're on, so yeah. but yeah, it feels good. Yeah, it was a quick anyway. turnaround from the 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 band kind of announcing its presence to announcing you were recording the album to the album coming out as well. Yeah, um, was is that a, is, is that a label decision or were you just like we really need to just get in and get the you know the album done in SAP? Or? No, we were we were we were well on the way with the second Beast Milk record. So um, a lot of these songs that are on this record are songs that uh, I had uh, written for the, the second Beast Milk record. Right. So it was uh, we were already into the process of it, and we were we were already well, we were very close to signing a deal for the second Beast Milk record mm -hmm. uh, when uh, when we had a breakup. So it was um, it was basically a you know a sort of carryover from that that we were just carried on writing, mm -hmm. and it became this uh, you know another band. We changed the name, and it's kind of like an evolution uh, on where, where we were going with that. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm really glad that we just we carried on and made um, made the finished kind of you know final piece of what mm -hmm. we were doing because uh, it, it was yeah if we'd left it it would have felt like an unfinished work you know? yeah because I mean from from my point of view like you know a huge fan of that uh, the, the album climax yeah. and um, the, like we through our conversation last time you'd obviously said you know you you could see things going a particular way and musically you had ideas etc and um, the obviously the, when the news of the band uh, kind of splitting dropped. There was that kind of, as a fan, there was that kind of, oh no, we're never going to see this, you know, yeah, we're never going to see yeah. the light of day. And the, the fact that the stylistically, you know, it's very much kind of in that, in that kind of ballpark, but you guys have like changed as well. You brought like a, yeah. a, a kind of, a, a, a kind of greater depth into your music, I think personally. Um, I mean, that was all part of the progression of the writing from the end of Climax in, yeah, was that yeah. No, I mean, you know, we we wouldn't have made the second record like the first record anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, once you sort of once a band name is finished, once a band is finished, uh, you kind of draw a line over things, and people yeah. people define the band with the the, the output, you know, mm -hmm. that they put out under that name. So um, it's very easy for people to sort of uh, really see the two two things as being far apart. But I think uh, if you if you delve into the record a bit more, you you realise that there's there's so many common uh, threads between the two bands. Yeah. I mean, it, it, for me, it's it's much more of a continuation than it is for uh, for others. But it's it's all relative, you know, how you see it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we would have made we would have made a we would have made a progression. We would have changed, uh, and the sound would have would have evolved yeah. with Beast Milk anyway. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is very much where I would have gone with the second record. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's missing uh, some of the parts. Of, of uh, you know Johan who left the band, mm -hmm. but uh, but I think what we gained uh, is I mean we, we gained a, a, an amazing drummer. He's one of the best in in the field in, of, of his of his age and mm -hmm. uh, of generation. Uh, and then uh, having Linnea come in and put put songs into the album as well, mm -hmm. I think really broadened it. You know, yeah. so it's not such a. I mean, Climax is a very it's a very sort of tight record. It's a very uh, um, I don't want to say one-dimensional, but it was it was very on one wavelength. Mm -hmm. You know, we were really you know going for this kind of uh, concept with the record. Yeah. And I think this new one is a bit more open, and it op it's opening a lot of avenues for the band as well. You mm -hmm. know, sort of showing people that there's a lot more to to the scope and vision of what we wanted to do yeah. than than sort of just uh, you know playing in one style. You know. So. Mm -hmm. I, I thought personally, because um, I've just actually reviewed it for a site and it got the maximum marks because I think it's brilliant. Um, but I thought the, the thing that was the thing that kind of caught me most kind of off guard was that yes, you it certainly can carry elements over, but the punk elements on the album are much more rooted in punk. If that makes sense, like yeah, yeah, like yeah. vocally, you, like you, your range is is being pushed, um, and all the all the best ways. But some of the quieter moments 
on the album, like uh, for example, like I think my favourite song, um, "Girl in a Vortex." I think that is probably the best thing that I've heard you guys do. I think it's such a beautiful song. Um, lyrics are really poignant and things. And I mean, the influences which were always kind of there in the background, I feel are now like the, the, one of the influences and the names that got kind of batted around was kind of echoing the Bunny Man and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. That is far more at the front on certain songs in this release but right. you've still got that balance with like kind of visceral punk songs as well I think it's I, I, I genuinely think it's a great great achievement um, and Dream Crash is a name uh, where 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 did that come from the concept of the album and you know I think um, it, it came it came about because we were we were we were talking about dreams a lot we were we, we had sort of one idea for the record and uh, then we started we started discussing our dreams we started writing them down in the studios we were recording as well and um, it became it became a, a name that that became synonymous with a certain feeling that we had around making the record I mean there was a lot of dreams and expectations just uh, you know within ourselves about bringing bringing the second Beast Milk record into uh, to, into life and uh, when it was dying I think uh, you know that for us was it we were in a state of dream crash you know it was yeah. just like or well, everything come, comes down and when you start from that place uh, I think you, you really value you know you really know what you want you really value um, uh, you really value things you know so it's sort of like it's that it's that part where everything comes crashing down and you suddenly have this new awareness of what you want to do and <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, um, and, uh, and I think I think uh, then as well with the the lyrics and the concept, it's kind of like it's kind of like an anti climax, you know. Mm -hmm. Climax is, is is like the the end, and then you've got something that's completely opposite. What happens after the end, you know? What comes mm -hmm. after the apocalypse and the fallout? Kind mm -hmm. of the living with the living with the knowledge that everything's fucked, you know, mm -hmm. that, that kind of thing. That's brilliant. I really really I really dig it. Um, you guys are out just now touring. Yeah. Um, obviously Glasgow tonight, uh, but you've you've been working your way through the UK and you've already done some European dates as well. You've done right. some festival stuff as well. Um, has that been has that been fun? <coughs> yeah, it has. It's been really good. Uh, it was. It's it's kind of been. It's been a bit strange because when we started doing the festivals, we were playing really a lot of Beast Milk stuff mm -hmm. and only playing a couple of the new songs and you know going out there really as people would just wanted to see Beast Milk. So we were booked as Beast Milk. Yeah. So some of those festivals we were doing were really just uh, for. The, the promise that we, we yeah. made, you know, to go out there and do the Beast Milk shows. But as the summer went on, it was kind of, it, it was really nice to see the reaction of people to the new songs mm -hmm. and getting into it and really glad that we were carrying on and there was a lot of fan support and we played Hellfest and it was it was yeah. really, really good. It was like a, a crazy reaction to the band and they loved the new tracks and everything. And that felt really good for us because we, we really had no idea of how it was going to play out. Yeah. You know, we weren't, we weren't expecting anything. We were kind of expecting a lot of people to just be like, you know, get, <laughs> get off with the new stuff like we you know we want bees milk yeah. back and I don't know people have been like the fans have been really good and uh, yeah the festival reactions were really were really really good Hellfest being one of them and also Beyond the Gates in Norway that was, was very much playing to our kind of our, our peer group you yeah, know, like yeah, yeah. Our, where we've come from from the underground so that was it was really nice to, to realise that we we were sort of working on different levels as well you know really nailing it at Hellfest to a big crowd who are used to kind of something a bit a bit larger and then also then going to somewhere like Beyond the Gates where it's an underground festival and that's really where you know the, this uh, the um, the excitement around this being in this band and doing this band is is that it's a it's a band that does sort of work in for different kinds of people yeah, yeah. Uh, and so so it's great to be able to do that to be able to play a big festival and, and a small one mm -hmm. but enjoy the best of both you know yeah yeah uh, and in terms of the rest of the year um, after this particular tour as a more, is, there, is there more tours booked? I, I did notice yeah. that there was some flyers had come up on your your Facebook page. So yeah. and it looked like quite a lot of dates again. So is it just kind of continuing on the march? Yeah, so to speak? yeah. It's not. So the next one isn't so long, but it's uh, it's um, it's mostly in Germany. But there's mm -hmm. a few other dates around France and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's going to be with Tribulation yeah. uh, and another band called Vampire. So it's going to be quite a heavy tour for us. But, but I think that's really good. You know, we've got a lot of people who like us who like that kind of music. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I was just a lot of friends have come to me and said, "Oh, you and Tribulation, that'd be really great. That'd be like my my dream fulfilled." Yeah. You know, having you two guys together. So I, I think it's like that. It's also 
listening to what our what our fans would like us mm -hmm. to do, who they'd like us to go out with, and we like Tribulation a lot. We hung with them at Hellfest, and you know the other guys, the Swedish guys from the band, they they know them, so so yeah. it's, it'll be it'll be a cool tour, I think. Yeah, some like-minded people together. So. Mm -hmm. um, plans for America. Yeah, well, we signed a, our license deal with Metal Blade, and, mm -hmm. and that's come out. I think the physical products come out now in in November, um, but they, you, you know can buy it online. It's released there already, but uh, they want us to get out there, and mm -hmm. they we're looking at next year. Fantastic. Um, so, so yeah, but it, it's, it's more like if the right thing comes along, <laughs> yeah, want to get out with a, with a good band. I know that yeah. America, touring America is pretty hard, so yeah, uh, we want to go want out it. with someone that's you know yeah. going to take care of us a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, and do a cool tour. It'd be nice to tour with some band that we get really excited about mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, the we were just speaking just off here as well because you are like uh, to say that you're busy just now is an understatement yeah because uh, you have your your other band yep. that we we're talking about and they're set to release an album in in january that's right yeah hex festival is we release a new hex festival record and a uh, how are you going to fit it all in? <laughs> I don't know um, uh, yeah that's a, that's a good it's a good question but uh I mean, I'm not doing anything else but music right mm -hmm. now, so I've sort of uh, I've, I've put that as my priority. Yeah. And um, I mean, I have a family, a home life as well. But it's you 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 gotta you gotta do the things that um, that 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 are, are the most important to yeah. you, you know. And and uh, so so for me, music is the is the thing. It's the drive. Yeah. Do, and, uh, yeah. That keeps me going. So. Yeah. So do you think it'll be a case of when there's downtime with great pleasure, you'll be out with the other band, and then. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like we we released the album now. We're doing some touring, so it's like how much how much are you really gonna be able to do, you know? And mm -hmm. I, we're not a band who's gonna just be doing uh, a lot of needless touring you yeah, know, all yeah, the yeah. time. And I think that that for our audience as well is is kind of that's where we we should be, you know, in a, in a place where it's a bit more special to see us mm -hmm. live, and uh, we keep keep it uh, keep it exciting for people. Um, and so so yeah, I think there's time for. There's time for other mm. stuff as well. So, but I mean, Hex Festival has been my my band. As people who who have fo followed what I've been doing, that's that's been my thing. You yeah. know, it's been like my main my main project yeah, for yeah. for a, for a long time. So, uh, so it's, it's just like a no brainer for me to continue yeah. doing what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, it's busy. It's busy, and it's really hard to. Um, to, to find the time for a, for a life in between, you know, like mates just wanting to go to the pub to meet up for a drink, yeah. that just uh, that just doesn't doesn't, doesn't happen. Really happen. <laughs> that doesn't happen now. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last time I spoke to you, uh, you may recall this: uh, the the site that we do, we do um, punk rock metal, but we also do some movies. Yeah. Uh, I know that you got a chance to to watch. I know, like yeah. myself, you, you like a bit of experimental film and yeah. uh, some documentaries. You checked out anything recently you've liked or? Uh, I know, just after saying that you're so busy, I may mean, not be the right question, but yeah. yeah. Um, no, I've got this. I've got this DVD of avant-garde cinema from the 1930s mm -hmm. that I was watching, um, and I've, I can't think of any of the, the, the directors at all off the top of my head. But mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a collection, um, and uh, I don't know. I, yeah. I checked out the new Mad Max movie. I really like that a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm big into the Mad Max uh, series. I've got so. it fits in with a yeah, kind of post-apocalyptic. Yeah. It's not really, it's not really obscure, but but I like it. No, no, it was um, like I saw that at the, the the cinema, and I think it's one of the best. Well, one of the most fun experiences I've had at the cinema because you yeah. just. It's a yeah, crazy it's movie. Yeah, and I mean, my my wife came to see it with me, and then she hadn't seen any of the old Mad Max movies, so we went back and I showed her the old, old yeah. movies, and I like those the best, like Road Warrior and stuff. Yeah, Road Warrior is crazy. There's a bit in Road Warrior where the guys the the guys like talking on his microphone, you know, mm -hmm. to the bikers, and they're they're circling around the the, the gas farm, and he's like uh, he's he's giving this commentary, and if you get it on subtitles, he's like. Uh, Gay boy berserkers, he's screaming. You know. Well, that would be a great name for a black metal band. Right? Gay, boy, gay boy berserkers. By the time this goes out, someone will have stolen yeah. it. Oh, yeah. oh well, so. it's out there now, so someone will take it. It's there for the taking. Yep. Uh, thank you very much for Cheers. giving us some time to chat. It has pleasure. always a pleasure chatting to yeah. you. Like I great say, pleasure. love. The, the love the new album uh, people yeah. should check it out it's out just now and I look forward to catching you later on thanks man thank you thanks.